Hey folks, this is Ray from DCRayMaker.com. Today I'm going to talk about one of the most frequently asked questions I get, which is around sensors, activity profiles, and bike profiles, um, in particular on Garmin devices. Uh, so I'm going to cover a wide range of devices, starting off with this basically 10-year-old 410 305 and talk about how things have advanced, uh, all the way up to the Edge 1000, 820, 520, uh, and some of the newer devices, and things like the 735 XT running watch. So whether or not you have a Garmin Edge cycling device, a Garmin Forerunner triathlon or running device, um, or something just super old, I'm going to go ahead and explain it all to you uh, from start to finish. So let's get started. Okay, in order to understand how and where we got to today, we need to kind of turn back the clock a bit and talk a brief history lesson, because uh, it might sort of explain some of the decisions that were made today. So to start off, we've got the Garmin Forerunner 305. Uh, now this watch is almost 10 years old and it still boots up. Here I am in 2016 uh, and it actually booted and charged and everything else. And I got the Forerunner 405. Um, now when this came out, about a year or two after this, uh, it's much, much smaller. So you'll see it's, it's quite a bit smaller. Uh, this was a multi-sport watch, um, but this also supported multiple sports, but not multi-sport. But that's a topic for a whole different day. What's unique about this is that it actually did have bike profiles. Um, so if you went into biking here, you go down to bike profile. Uh, oops, I gotta press it again. See, it's been a while since I've been using this particular watch, uh, a lot of years in fact. And you can see bike one, two, and three. Um, but what this didn't do is it didn't actually save sensors related to that particular bike. So instead, I had to go down into the sensor menu here. There we go, accessories. And I have a heart rate sensor, a cadence pod, and foot pod. And that's it. I can pair precisely one of those to each of these. Um, now, the same is true of this 405. This didn't have any bike profiles at all. Uh, so it just simply had accessories. I could use this horrendous touch bezel thing uh, to get in there and I can then scan for one heart rate sensor, one foot pod and one uh, cadence sensor. And that's it. Next, if we move up to the Garmin Edge 800, I think this is 800, 810, 800, yep. Now here on the Edge 800, um, you'll see that bike profiles expanded a little bit. So now I have lots of bike profiles and I go into them um, and I can now pair a given speed and cadence sensor for it or a given power meter for it um, and also enter some bike details like the weight and the odometer uh, for that particular bike. But there's still some missing pieces here. For example, the training pages are universal across everything. So I can't easily go ahead and have one bike profile for mountain biking and one bike profile for road biking. So that's where we were on the 800. Now we fast forward a bit to kind of more current generation products like the Edge 1000 up here. So the Edge 1000 was the first unit to introduce the concept of activity profiles. Now activity profiles are a bit different in that they're no longer tied to a given bike profile. So you can see right now I have a ride activity, or on the ride I have a train and a race activity profile. Um, now activity profiles here basically covered data settings. So I can go to different data screens, all sorts of different data screens there, um, how lap summaries display, virtual partner, etc. The idea here was basically more about the experience of a given ride than anything else. So again, I'm still in this particular race activity profile. I can change my navigation settings, my alerts, my auto features. Anything that might be specific to a given bike um, or a given type of activity is what's covered here. Meanwhile, sensors went under their own setting. So we go back to the settings here, sensors, and now this is where I've got all my sensors in one spot. So it didn't matter whether or not I was on my road bike or my triathlon bike, all these sensors were accessible. Now you may be asking why they bother doing this. And the reason is a lot of times people would start off the ride and forget that they had to change their bike profile as you saw back on the Edge 810 or 800, uh, which meant that they would ride a long distance, potentially the entire ride, and not have any sensor data at all. Uh, perhaps they weren't actually showing that screen on their pages. Whereas now what happens is as soon as I spin the wheel, it's gonna go ahead and find the sensor data here. So you'll see this here as I go ahead and put this on the unit and I'm gonna go ahead and spin and now when I went ahead and spin the bike there, the sensor automatically is shown up top. Um, so, so the cool thing here is I can add a whole crap ton of sensors now. Uh, so you can see I have a speed sensor already connected there, the one that we just uh, spun the wheel on. I've got numerous power meters. I have a Brim Brothers power meter, a prototype power meter, something else. Um, I've got a tax trainer there. I've got lots and lots of stuff here, numerous heart rate straps. Um, all these things are in here. Now for the normal person, you're probably not gonna have this many sensors. Uh, but if you do have a lot of sensors, a lot of bikes perhaps, or even multiple use, people using the same unit, it makes it really easy to go ahead and share one particular uh, unit and not have to worry about whether or not you're moving between bikes. I can also then look at the settings on that given bike. So I can go down to here, I can go sensor details, and automatically configure different settings. 
Okay, next, when it comes to adding sensors, it's also a lot easier in the past. In the past, you had to go and actually specify a given sensor type. Um, so you had to know whether it was a speed-only sensor, a speed cadence combo sensor, or a cadence sensor, which is really confusing, and a lot of people, well, quite frankly, got confused. Um, now, I can just click Add Sensors, and yes, I can narrow it down if I wanted to by those different types, or I can just simply say, show me everything now. Go ahead and search all, and I'll go ahead and find all the sensors that I haven't connected to my bike. So I can see this first power meter shows me the amp plus ID there. Um, so in this case, this is the cork power meter. The amp plus ID is etched on the side of it. I have a cadence sensor. This one is a Garmin cadence sensor. Um, I have a speed sensor, also Garmin, and I have a power meter here. This is a stages power meter. And again, their amp plus ID is etched on the side of it. So I can go ahead and say, I'm gonna add this power meter. I'm gonna add uh, this speed sensor there and click add. And now it's, it's showing up my screen. Now what you'll see here is it says it's got multiple speed sensors. And this is because I actually have, for reasons that don't really make any sense, two speed sensors on this particular bike. Uh, so I can change between those two. Now right now it's calling them by their AMP plus IDs. Um, so you'll see that 395519, uh, 3782, that is their AMP plus ID number. On a lot of sensors that's written on the side of it, um, but not always, so you gotta kind of keep that in mind. If you're in your house pairing, it's not a big deal uh, because you're probably only gonna find one. Um, but if you're at a race somewhere and you forgot to pair somebody the last second, that's where it's actually handy to take like a felt tip marker and write that on the side of your sensor so you always know what your sensor ID is. In this case, it's asking if I wanna switch from one to the next. I'm gonna click yes. Um, it's gonna go and do that. Now what's cool now is I can actually name these sensors. So I'm gonna go back to this one right here and I'm gonna give it a name of the cork. So just go ahead and type that in real quick. And you'll see once I've done that, if I go back to the list here, it shows it in the list and it shows it as cork. Um, if I were to go open that up, you'll see sensor details. Uh, I've got the crank length, I've got the auto zero on. Now in this case, this particular unit isn't using crank length. Uh, for some units like vector or uh, other kind of pedal-based power meters, they will use crank length. Do not fret if this is not showing up um, on your power meter. Uh, it will show up if it's needed. It won't show up typically if it's not needed. In some cases like this where it just happens to show up either way. The only place ever, ever, ever this is used for is for power meters that need it. Uh, so it doesn't have any impact otherwise. And if I go into about, I can usually get battery status information there. So I'm gonna go ahead and back uh, to the main page here. And we're gonna look at that speed sensor up here. Now the speed sensor will show me the wheel size. Uh, with wheel sizes, you can let that do that automatically. So if I were to now go ride for about a quarter mile, uh, so you know, a little under half a kilometer, um, it'll go ahead and automatically calculate this, or I can enter it in manually here uh, for a bit more accuracy. Uh, sometimes when I'm doing testing, I'll actually just set them all to be exactly the same, uh, so I don't have to worry about things, uh, but usually I'll go ahead and correct that manually. So the reason why you may wanna do a manual calibration of something or the manual specification of the wheel size uh, is if you're doing something with a lot of switchbacks where GPS performance might suffer, this will give you accurate uh, speed and thus distance data throughout your ride. Now, some of you with multiple bikes one may wonder how you can track your odometer stats. There's two ways you can do this. One is that you can set up a new activity profile for each bike. Um, so I can go ahead and create a new activity profile here. I can change the name. I can call this Road Bike or Roadie One. How's that? Uh, or Rohe one because I can't type right now. Um, and I can go ahead and then enable that. And if I go back here, you'll see that now I'm on the Rohe uh, and I can click this to change different bike profiles, right like that. And you'll see it changes the color. I can configure the color back in that same activity profile setting. Um, now, if I go ahead and click ride here, I'm gonna change one of the data fields um, to be the odometer, just to kind of demonstrate this. So I'm gonna hold this down. This is the way you can change activity profiles, by the way, on the touchscreen devices. Uh, and oops, I missed distance there. So distance, odometer. Now you'll see it's 0, 0.00 miles because I've written nothing on this particular activity profile. But now if you watch, if I go back and change it to the yellow activity profile, which I've been riding with on some tests lately. Um, oops, so I'm gonna go ahead and click ride. And then I'm gonna swipe to the odometer page that I made earlier, 254 miles for this particular odometer. So that's one way you can go ahead and make that customize per activity profile, which is kind of handy. The second way is to go onto Garmin Connect. Uh, there you can create gear, and you can go ahead and specify different gear for different bikes. Um, so I can actually create an entire bike, but I can also make sub gear for that bike, uh, such as wheels, for example, or chains, or anything else you want to track separately. Uh, and you can configure that to be automatically uh, listed when you upload a ride. The downside, though, is that there isn't any way to go ahead and have links between what's showing here and showing there. The closest you can get is when you finish a ride, so I'm gonna go and start this ride right now, and click stop. Um, on the latest firmware of Garmin's devices, you'll see at the very bottom here, it says ride type. 
Uh, and this is where I can change this ride type from cycling to indoor, uh, e-mountain, and, and so on, mountain, commuting, etc. cetera. Um, that'll update the, the field in Garmin Connect, but it won't actually change the particular equipment that you're using. I hope to see at some point that Garmin will go ahead and add something similar here, where I can change a different bike right on this itself. Um, certainly, I think we're at the point where technology is advanced enough that this should be able to pull data from Garmin Connect, pull my gear data there, and allow me to choose this on the unit here itself. Now, you may be asking, what happens if you want to start with a different odometer value? For example, you've been riding your bike more than the same day you bought your Garmin. Um, what you can use is a third-party tool, and I'll link it to it down in the description there, that'll go ahead and change this value to something else. Garmin doesn't allow you to do it by default on the device itself, uh, so it's something you have to use a third-party tool to do. It's not too difficult, but it's not too easy either. So it's kind of like in the middle. If you've got some basic PowerPoint skills, you can probably make this tool work. If the start button scares you, probably not so much. Now, lest you think I'm leaving out all of you runners, uh, all of Garmin's latest running watches actually do the same thing as well. Uh, so if you go ahead and down into the settings, I'm gonna go right there into menu, um, you'll see down below settings. And then within that, we've got heart rate monitor, but we also have sensors and accessories. Um, this is where you can pair the same sort of sensors. Now, right now you're seeing I've actually maximized out the number of sensors paired to this watch. So I can tell you then exactly how many sensors that is. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 20 is the number of sensors that you can have. I actually didn't know that until this very moment um, on at least a 735 XT. And you can see these are all different types of sensors and numerous duplicates as well. So for example, I've got one power meter, two power meter, three power meter, four power meter, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine power meters paired here. And this will automatically pick up and ask me which power meter to use uh, based on my particular activity. I can also disable certain sensors, which is really handy on both this as well as the Edge series. So you see this one is listed off, whereas this one is listed as searching. Um, now the reason I would turn something off is if I definitely do not want it to ask for that particular sensor. So I can just hit this here, and I'll go on and off back in a searching status, which is the default. Uh, I can also name these. So this one just simply named the default ant ID that I was given, but I can spend some time with these buttons and actually give it a pretty name. Uh, and then I can go ahead and remove it down there. And the same is true of anything else. I don't believe I've actually named anything in this particular set here. Sometimes I'll just give them a very quick name so I know what they are, like HRM try, et cetera. And then just like on the other units, when I go search for something, I can you know, specify the search for a type uh, here, or I can search for just everything under the sun. So you may be wondering which devices support the activity modes and all these different new features. More or less, it's everything made in the last two years, but it's also everything about 170 bucks or more. Uh, so Garmin's cheapest watches, uh, for example, the Forerunner uh, 20 or 15 or some of those units do not support multiple activity or uh, sensor profiles or sensor pools, um, whereas all the new stuff above that does. So anything basically like 200 bucks or more uh, supports multiple device sensors and basically a sensor pool concept. Uh, and anything about $300 or more supports activity profiles. Um, so that's kind of the rough dividing line. You want to check for every given unit. Now, obviously, all this old stuff doesn't support it either because it's super old and no longer updated. Uh, but that's just something to, to keep in mind when you're looking at new devices. So just to recap on a couple of quick terms here, uh, the sensor pool is the ability to have a whole crap ton of sensors paired to your device and saved in this basically pool so that as soon as you jump on your bike um, or grab whatever heart rate strap you have, it'll automatically find that and allow you to go without having to basically select something uh, during your run. Activity profiles allow you to customize sort of the look and feel of the device as well as some of the basic functions that may be applicable to different types of riding. And then last but not least, that cycling ride type is what allows you to customize what the Garmin Connect value is for that particular cycling activity. It's only for cycling. With that, go ahead and hit that like button down below as well as the subscribe button so you get all sorts of new videos. Uh, as soon as I upload them, especially on days when new products are announced, you'll get them the second the embargo lifts, uh, which means you'll be ahead of the game with everyone else. Thanks for watching.